Good evening, everyone. So who wants to go to Mars? Well, not a lot. That's good, that's good. You guys know that one day on Mars is equivalent to 24 hours and 40 minutes? And what's more interesting is that one year on Mars is equivalent to 687 days, two years on Earth. I think ladies will like that. There's one problem, though. It's a dead planet. It's a very, very cold, dead planet with the majority of its atmosphere consisting of carbon dioxide, CO2. So why humans decided to go and explore Mars? It's very simple. Scientists believe that more than four billion years ago, Mars used to look like Earth. But something went wrong. And it lost its atmosphere and it turned into a dead planet. So better understanding Mars will help us better understand our planet. It's unlikely this might happen to Earth. However, it will make us better understand our Earth and our planet and also our universe. Why did the UAE decide to go to Mars? And that's again a very simple answer. Because Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of stone. But the Stone Age ended because of progress. And Oil Age will not end because we run out of oil, but it will end because of progress. It's about the future of the country. It's about building a sustainable ecosystem in the country for the people of the UAE and for people of the region. It's about survival. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, when he announced the mission, he wanted to build basically the science and technology sector in the UAE. He wanted Emirati scientists. We have engineers. The country has invested for many years in preparing future engineers. However, without the scientists and with the limited career path they have, you won't be able to build that sector and build the knowledge-based economy that you want to have, the sustainable one. Because scientists come up with new discoveries, and engineers take those new discoveries, discoveries and change, change them into products, make them into products. So that's why the UAE is going to Mars, so for the future of the country, and also for the future of the region. You're talking about the region that has more than 100 million youth in it, with a lot of potential, a lot of skill. A region that was more than 800 years ago, a generator of knowledge during the Islamic golden age, contributed to humanity by bringing knowledge. It was a symbol of tolerance. People of different backgrounds, different religions, lived together and built the region together. So the message that the UAE government wants to send to the youth of the region is that if the UAE is able to reach Mars in less than 50 years, you guys can do much more. So that's why the UAE is looking into going to Mars. What we'll be doing, basically, we'll be studying the Martian atmosphere. We'll be studying the relationship between the upper layer and the lower layer of the Martian atmosphere using three instruments, an infrared instrument, an ultraviolet, and a camera. Again, that camera is not going to be just for media purposes. No, it's going to be with scientific applications. So through this mission, we want to build the future scientists. Currently, the scientists in the UAE have limited paths. They either join universities, teach universities or schools, or very specific labs. However, through this mission, His Highness wants to send a strong message to the youth, the Emirati youth. Is that basically, you have a career path, just like an engineer. And you are part of building this nation. like any other profession. If you look at the timeline of the mission, when His Highness first met the team, he gave a set of requirements. The first requirement was you guys need to reach Mars before the 2nd of December 2021 to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the UAE with a big achievement and to send a very strong message also for, to the youth of the region. The second requirement he gave us, he said, basically, you're not going to buy it. You're going to build it. 
And we all know that it's the first time that the UAE goes to Mars. And Mars is difficult, it's hard. 50% of the missions that have been to Mars have failed. So what he said, you don't start from scratch. You start where others ended. You collaborate, you learn from others, you work with other entities, you go through a know-how transfer program, which we are doing currently with our partners, our academic partners, universities from around the world who have experience in uh, space technology and space science. Why universities? Why academic partners? Because they are responsible and they're obligated to generate knowledge and share knowledge. So that's the approach that the team took based on the direction given to us by His Highness. The unique thing about this mission though also is that if you look at the time frame that we have, it's literally half of the other, like compared to other missions, it's literally half of that time. Other missions have 10 to 12 years to develop, to develop and deliver their missions. We have only six, or we had only six. Now we have two years left to launch because opportunity to launch to Mars comes once every two years. The next opportunity is 2020. So that pushed us out of our comfort zone, made us think out of the box. And also, one thing he also his hand has told us is that you don't have an open budget. You have a very limited budget. And that's going to be announced at the right time. The approach was to come up with a new philosophy of conducting such missions. Efficiency and effectiveness should be core of that. And this mission is not about reaching Mars, it's about preparing the future scientists and leaders and engineers who will take the UAE to the next level, level in the next couple of years, and to secure the future of the country. So what you see in front of you is basically the spacecraft that the team has uh, developed with our partners. It's going to be a 1.5 ton spacecraft that's going to travel for seven months until it reaches Mars. Uh, it uses X-band to communicate with Earth. There's going to be 14 to 20 minutes delay in communicating with it. And we are currently at the mature stage of actually integrating the system. We have manufactured the different parts and components. Now it's coming together. Again, what you see in front of you is the work of a dedicated team that was pushed out of his comfort zone, that had to think out of the box with very limited resources, at the same time with tough requirements set by the leadership. So the concept of this is okay to fail, it's okay to make mistakes. However, you need to learn, I need to move forward with that. And the idea here is that I want all of you guys to think about, especially the young ones, the future scientists, the future doctors, the future managers, the future economists, is that if you guys want to move forward, if you guys want to progress in your lives, is that you have to think out of your comfort zone. You have to think differently. To be creative and to be able to compete and be ahead of others, don't follow others. Create your own path. Learn from others. Mistakes are fine. We all do mistakes, and that's why we are where we are today. A lot of things that we have in the UAE, people said that you cannot do it. It's a mistake. It's a mistake to build a Palm Island, and we did build it. It's a mistake to build Burj Khalifa, and we did build it. It's a mistake to build, to build Burj Al Arab, and we did build it. It's about pushing our boundaries. Ladies and gentlemen, failure is an option. But failure to progress is not an option. Thank you very much.